Hi, Mandra Armstrong, and welcome to the back of this teardown lab. Today, we're continuing our SDR in a box project. If you remember, we had this portable spectrum analyzer, which I'd made in a previous video, but it was missing some key features. So I wanted to replace the antenna, which is now missing from this, with this one, which came with my new Alec dongle. And the reason is this one actually comes with additional antennas at different frequencies. So I think that's really cool. And it does have a connector on the end, which I do believe they're called SMA connectors, correct me if I'm wrong, but these little mini coax connectors, which are great, but not so great when you want to plug them into TV based dongles. So these are primarily for TV, hence the RF connection. However, there are a couple of uh, things here I'd want to show you. This is the ultra low noise amplifier from GPIO Labs that I do want to use so that I can turn on an amplification, turn it off at the flick of a switch or the unplugging and plugging of a USB cable. And to do that, I need to connect these two together, which normally means you have to have one of these these connectors on the end of your device and you use a coupler. So this is the first thing I'm going to be working on because until we can get a coupler onto this thing, we can't connect anything up at all. Right, so let's dismantle these things. I do have this uh, Balen board which I don't use at all, so I'm going to take the connector off that. But let's have a look inside our dongle first because unless we have a suitable place to solder it to, it's going to be difficult. Crack it open. Okay, you can see that's pretty heavily soldered there. That's because there would have been a lot of pressure put on that, but it's actually, I think we can do this. So let's just desolder it. That's the first step. Let's get the soldering iron warmed up. Almost out of solder. We will need to get some in a future video. So just some solders down below, we can try some. Now this is gonna be a nightmare because look, it's got a mass of solder on it. If we're pretty sure we're never gonna use this again, as a TV board, we could just cut it there. In fact, I might just do that because this is going to be a nightmare and I can't be bothered to get a bigger soldering iron. So let's nibble it. So I'm going to nibble it here at this junction and hope that will do. Nibble it just a little bit. I want to see you nibble it just a little bit. It's totally nibbled. Right. Sent the pin off. We're lucky we didn't damage anything at all there. It's going to tin those pads, seeing as we do have solder blobs on them. Good. Let's chuck that away. Now let's dismantle our... Oh, this is going to be its own challenge. Right, so this is similar thing again, but the difference here, of course, is that it's unchoppable. So we're going to have to use some braid here and if you've got some, add some flux too. Now you do have some flux on this little fluxy brush. Get your flux on there, both sides of course. Let's apply that heat. Full heat ahead. Mmm, juicy. Ooh. Next one. That is hot. You can see it takes a bit of time, but it does get there. That's off, so we now can figure how to fit this in. That's a tricky part, but I think that'll do there. I'm quite inclined to chop off these two outer legs, and you'll see why when I zoom in. I'm just going to nobble them first. Uh, yeah, that one. And, oh my gosh, what did that do? They fired off like missiles. Okay. So you can see we want that pin to touch the center there. And the reason I kept the bottom ones on because that is the same ground pads there. So we can just actually solder it like so and we should be pretty happy. In fact, that is a great position to have it in. So I'm just going to gently, gently turn it around, let it sit there. So we don't want it to move now. That's exactly where we need it to be. I'm going to take the soldering iron. I'm going to put the soldering iron on pretty hot. So it's about 400 degrees. Well, actually, it's about 380. Let's just give it a tack. I don't want it to move, basically. Look, that's good. That's not going to go anywhere. We can belt and brace it up a liter. In fact, I'm going to add a little bit more heat in a second. 
Now let's get this center pin nicely soldered. Boom, that's done. Now I'm going to put the heat right up to 450 degrees because I really want to get some heat sunk into this case because we don't want this breaking off, do we? So we're at 438, that's close enough. So let's now just bridge across here from this top pad. It's going. It's taking its time to heat up, but it will do it. That's it. That's looking pretty good. And in fact, I'm going to do the other side just from the bottom. In fact, I'm going to just touch them to there. I think it's going to be more than enough. And that's it. And that's it. You get a better view that way. So that. Oh, it's hot, but it's not going to go anywhere. Now, before we fit it back into its case, because it will be hard to connect to that, we could cut the case, but what I'm just going to do is fit this joiner, because we're going to need that joiner, because we're going to want to use that low noise amplifier in the antenna circuit. So, put that together. That is looking really cool. We'll put the little bezel back on. Well, the bezel seen better days. Is it possible that we're almost done on this? Could it have been that easy? <laughs> One downside of using this antenna, look at the wire. The Nualec wire coax is really thick. We're going to have to fit this stuff in the box a bit more carefully than we did in the past. But that's okay by me. So let's get our receiver, our SDR, back in there. So that's in there now with its little fly lead. And we'll connect our GPIO Labs LNA into here. So that's oh, that's the RF in. No, we want it on the RF out. Nice and tight. We might hot glue that somewhere later, but that's fine floating for now. Our LNA will need power, so we do have this little USB lead. I was saving it for something else, but I think this is okay. We're just going to put that in there. Oops, hello. Don't break anything bit of straining there but that's not that's not going to come out we're going to leave that in we can just test that works in a moment because we'll see if that light comes on but that's a nice simple one and the next thing is to take our new elec antenna let's see if it sits in there nicely oh it is magnetic it will but this cable is so thick i'm going to leave this aside but just want to show you something you can actually unscrew the antenna on this i'm not sure we can fit this one in the box but we can certainly fit this one you can put these antennas that are more suitable for different frequencies on it so that could be super cute especially if you could get this one in the box you might just get it in the box when it's bent like that. I'm going to attach the RF in that's that that's that nice and tight this is a really nice unit because it's just so teeny tiny if you remember in the past I have bought some cheaper Far East ones of these and they didn't have the USB, they didn't have the LED, and they were bigger. So frankly, this is already ticking a lot more boxes, especially for a portable project like this. It might be nice, though, for me at some point, though, to put the wires here behind this metal block so it acts as a strain relief, because I'm really worried that it's all going to get yoinked out one day. So you can see the waveform there. We're not pushing the button yet. We're just getting ready to push the button. And I'm going to push it in three, two, one, go. So you see the peak right there appearing. Ah, that auto scaling again. But don't worry, you can see the peak. That's all we need to know for now. I'm going to now power our LNA. So watch here, by the way, that says 21 decibels. So that's the kind of peak, 21 decibels. And it's a bit awkward because I have to weigh it all down. But let me just plug in our LNA. And you can see that's on now. The LED is on. So now I'm going to push the button. Whoa, look at that. So now we've gone right up to 61 decibels. That is massively different. In fact, look at that. Boom. Boom, shakalak, rude boy. <laughs> you're seeing it right there, but you're getting a little bit, of course, across the board. Now, if we go back to a radio frequency, like we chose on the last video, let's see, we went to 95.8. Oops, that's not what we want. Delete point eight. My fingers are dry, by the way. I think these capacitive touch screens need, need a more moist hand there. So if we switch the mode, so you can see clearly now all of these FM radio channels coming up. 
And if I switch back, let's see what it's sort of reading between minus 61 and 34 decibels. Let me unplug this. Bang. Look at the, you can see it right away, night and day. No signals, no signals being fetched in at all. And then I have to admit to you, I'm not using an FM optimized antenna, but you could definitely see that there when I plug it back in. There they go. Uh, if you do spend time configuring the min and max, if you do figure out how they all work, let me know, you will be able to get that display looking a lot better. Let's just have one quick go. So you can see between there, minus 60 and 24. So what I'm gonna say, minimum, let's see if we can do this. We're gonna say minus, oh, do we have to say 60? Okay, we go 60 and hit minus, minus 60. And let's do the max of 60. How about minus 60 to 60? Let's see what that looks. Yeah, look, right in the middle. And then when we unplug it, I've just got it in my other hand here. I'm just about to unplug it. Let's see what happens. Boom. So there you go. I'm quite happy. I'm quite happy with this. The moment of truth, though, it's great that it all works. So I've just unplugged it. It's great that it all works. But does it all fit? So let's put a USB cable in there. So that's pretty nice. I'm not worried about having to take it out and assemble it each time. That's not a concern of mine. I mean, this is a very specific piece of measuring equipment. It's unlikely you're going to be running around with it all over the shop. You can put the antennas in here. Oh, don't want to put them there because you've got the ribbon cable. Better this end if you can, which we can. Now you can't fold this one away, unfortunately. And we were relying on the magnet before with the old base. Let's see how the cable wants to go. So I'm going to wrap the cable off this camera a little bit. Because it's lashing around like a madman. You know what I never seem to have and I never buy? Rubber bands. We should get some rubber bands in this place. We need some rubber bands up in here. That's what they all say. The tricky one is this antenna, of course, and I'm not sure how long. If it stays with a bend in it, will it spring itself back into life when you need it? That's always the question. Maybe we'll just leave that out of the box for now. That's okay. Can we shut the lid? Yes, 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 we can. So what do we need for that? I think perhaps we will attach a magnet and that could hold that in there like that. That would do, that will do me nicely. So hopefully that of some use to you to see how, one again, to build your own portable SDR radio piece of equipment. You can certainly optimize it more by the way by maybe trimming the antenna or changing the pieces. It's all up to you. You can probably get them. In fact, you can buy similar things like this that actually already kind of fit in your pocket. They're pretty small already. But if you want to make something again, like me, from scraps and stuff you had on the shelf, go ahead and do that. I'll be playing more with this GPIO Labs LNA, but if you don't have one, go check out their website. It could be the one for you. I'm pretty pleased to have it as part of this kit. Uh, please like, share, subscribe if you're that way inclined. And as ever, thank you for watching.